I made a wooden DM screen with a built-in player facing display using only three household tools. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make one too and then show you four ways to use it, which will answer the question of why the heck you'd wanna do this in the first place. I linked a PDF with instructions and all the supplies you'll need in the description below. The Amazon links down in the description are affiliate links, so if you use them to make a purchase, I get a small commission. Welcome to the table. I'm Kelly and we're gonna do some crafts. I was sitting in my thinking room when I had the incredible, unique, never Never been done before idea to build a DM screen with a built-in display. So I went on the internet to confirm what a brilliant and unique idea this was. Kelly, you genius. Only to discover that I was absolutely not the first person to think of this and it has been done many times before. However, it seemed like almost all of them had been made using power tools. Because many people don't have access to a wood shop, I decided to challenge myself to build this using only three simple tools, the cost of which would be included in the budget. The first step was to measure everything and then make a plan. I wanted to make the inside of the screen fit four sheets of eight and a half by 11 inch paper. So I made the dimensions of the center panel, 18 inches by 12 inches, and the two side panels, nine inches by 12 inches. But that turned out to be my first mistake. After receiving the wood panels and measuring them, I found out that they're actually 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters instead of 12 inches by 12 inches. 30 centimeters is 11 and 13 16 inches. And I just didn't want to deal with all those fractions. So unwillingly, I switched to the metric system. I redid all of my measurements and I didn't have to deal with any fractions. You know, they might be onto something with this whole metric thing. The sides are half the width of the front, so it'll fold together and close for storage. There are cutouts in the back of the center panel to access to ports and buttons on the monitor. But by plans done, twice, I moved on to the cutting. I grabbed some cardboard and a scrap piece of plywood so that I wouldn't cut into my floor and started measuring and cutting. Just a tip here, when lining up and cutting on your mark, err on the side of making your opening for the monitor bigger. It's all right if the opening is a little bigger than the monitor because we'll be using some foam tape to keep the monitor in place. It's better to have the opening be too big than too small. I would recommend cutting the front and back pieces last once you've had some practice with the inside pieces. The front and back pieces are the only ones that'll be seen in the end, so they're the only ones that need to look nice. After finally finishing all the cutting, I I put the pieces together and discovered the next issue. It turns out when you make a bunch of imprecise cuts by hand, they are imprecise. So everything didn't quite line up. Don't worry though, we'll fix this later. As long as the monitor fits inside, you can press on. If it doesn't fit, it's easier to do some trimming at this point rather than after you glue. Onward, gluing is next. I'm using some wood flooring glue that I had lying around, but you can use any wood glue. Layer by layer, just add the glue to the pieces and then place them down. We're going to glue the back pieces and all of the middle pieces together, but not the front yet, and I'll tell you why in a minute. You can slide the pieces around a little to spread the glue out before lining it up. Once you have all your layers in place, do one last check to make sure the layers are lined up. Wait until the glue becomes tacky before adding your weights, otherwise the layers could slide out of alignment. You can also take this opportunity to wipe away any excess glue with a damp cloth. Now you're going to need some heavy things. I knew I got these for a reason. I used my scrap piece of plywood and cardboard to help disperse the weight and then let it dry overnight. Now to find out, will the monitor actually fit inside? Ooh, moment of truth here. Mine just fits, which is perfect. But if yours doesn't, don't panic. You can either trim the insides with your knife or sand them down using some sandpaper. The insides are all lined up on mine, but the outside edges are all over the place. We're gonna fix this by sanding down the edges. I'm using 150 grit sandpaper and a wood block to make sure I sand straight. If you just hold the sandpaper in your fingers without the wood block, you're most likely going to end up with a wavy edge. If you don't have a wood block, you can tape together some of your offcuts. This stuff sands down super easily, so it didn't take long to get a nice flat edge. I did make a mistake here though, and it is going to haunt me later. Now these next steps are a lot of work and they aren't strictly necessary, but they do make the finished product look so much better. Staining and varathaning will make this cheap craft wood look less cheap and crafty. It's not going to make it look like expensive hardwood, but I think it really takes it to the next level. For the stain, I used a water-based dark cherry stain made by Sanson that I got from a local hardware store. You can get them in little tester cans, which is more than enough for this project. You can use any stain you like, but I'm pretty happy with the color of this one. Once you apply some to an offcut and you're happy with the color, you can go ahead and apply it. Just make sure to wipe the wood down with a wet cloth first to remove any dust. The closer we get to the end of this project, the higher the stakes, because any mistake 
mistake we make now will probably show up on the finished product. I really hope we don't mess this up. Grab an old shirt or a bed sheet to use as a rag and wipe the stain on as evenly as you can, working as quickly as you can. Water-based stain dries quite quickly, so you want to get an even coating over the whole face before it dries. If some of it dries and then you wipe over it again, you'll get darker patches. If you've never used stain before, I would definitely recommend putting a few coats on to some offcuts to experiment with what works best for you. At this point, we're just doing the faces and the inside edges of the front pieces. We'll do the rest of the edges later and you'll see why. I went with one coat of stain except on the front panel because I was trying to cover up a mistake with a second coat. I forgot to do the inside edges of the front face and then tried to carefully go over them again but it left a dark streak where my cloth touched the front face. The second coat didn't fully cover the mistake but it made it less noticeable. Ideally, just get everything on the first coat. Now for the Varathane. I did two coats of a water-based Varathane using a foam brush. This will help seal in the stain and make the whole thing a bit more durable. Wipe off the wood with a damp cloth to get rid of any dust. Again, try and make the coats as even as possible and use longer brush strokes at the end to wipe away buildup. I would recommend using a light at an angle so you can easily see any imperfections on the surface. You should lightly sand the surface between coats using something like a 600 grit sandpaper and then wipe away any dust with a damp cloth. I didn't because I didn't think it was important and I found out it is important important, and I'll show you why in a minute, but don't skip this step. Second coat done. Once all the faces are stained and varathaned, it's time to seal in the monitor. Add some foam tape to the back of the monitor and place it inside. Now take your wood glue and carefully apply it around the edge of the monitor. Here goes nothing. Or everything, I guess. Being careful not to get too close to either edge. Then place your front face pieces on top, carefully lining everything up. Wait until the glue becomes tacky, and then once again, weight it down with your plywood and heavy things. Once that's dry, we're gonna do another sand on the edges. The reason we didn't stain or varathane the edges before was so that we could sand the edges at the end once the front face panels were on to make sure the edges line up. Once you're happy with the edges, you can repeat the same steps as before to stain and varathane the edges. As I began applying my stain to the edges, I realized the big mistake I had made earlier during my initial sanding of the edges. I had some excess glue runoff and I didn't sand all the way through it. Stain isn't going to soak into dry wood glue, which means I have light colored patches along the edges. At this point, I could have stopped and sanded the edges again sanding off the stain I had applied and through the excess wood glue. But I didn't, and I have a very good reason for that. I just didn't want to. And then I made another critical mistake here, one that I can't fix, but I'll show you how I've covered it up on the finished product. After varathaning the edges, I laid the piece down directly on the cardboard. Some varathane ran off and pooled underneath, sticking to the back edge and leaving some nasty marks. If I did this again, I would just elevate the center of the panel on some cardboard or wood so that the edges were suspended in the air while it dried. Seeing all the pieces stained and varathaned and the monitor sitting so nicely in the middle made me so excited and powered me through to the end of this build. Although, this is where I noticed that the varathane on the front panel had quite a bumpy texture to it and it catches the light in a weird way. This is why it's important to sand in between coats of varathane and then wipe it off with a damp cloth to remove any dust. I've learned my lesson for the future. The last steps are to screw in the hinges, add the little corner decorations, add some adhesive magnets to the back, which also cover up those varathane marks, and fire it up. After putting on the hinges and finding out that it just closes, I realized that making the side panels exactly half the width of the front panel doesn't leave any room for error. I've revised the plans in the description to make the side panels 22.25 centimeters wide instead to ensure there's a gap in the middle. The finishing touches are these decorative corner pieces that I put on with super glue. These little touches and details really elevate it and make it look finished. Now to plug it in and turn it on. I chose this monitor because it's USB-C, which means I can power it and send an image to it using just one cable. These little right angle USB-C adapters fit in the spaces that we cut out to keep everything tidy and compact. So why the heck would you even want to do this and what would you use it for? Well, here are four ways I'm going to use it and I'll walk through the software I'm going to use to run it as well. Because dragging a bunch of windows around and leaning over the top of the screen to see what you're doing is not practical. First up is initiative tracking. Some people have really cool initiative trackers on top of their screens or they ask one of their players to manage initiative. But because I use improved initiative to run combat, it's super easy to put the player view up on the screen for everyone to see. And as I advance the order on my screen, it automatically updates. That way my players can see when their turn is coming up and where everyone else is in the order. You can do this with any initiative tracker that has a player view. I found that this next thing really increases immersion for my players and this display makes it so much easier. Showing my players cool art of the monsters that they're fighting is something that I really like doing. Before, I 
used to turn my laptop around to show them at the beginning of combat, or print some images out and hang them on the back of my screen. But now I can create an image slideshow of monster art that will play alongside my initiative tracker for the whole combat. Using a soundboard to create a soundscape has helped me elevate my descriptions, but now I can also pair that with animations or videos of landscapes to help set the scene. There are tons of ambiance videos on YouTube with animated landscapes or long videos that you can run on the screen to make the environment feel more real. Whether your players are weathering a storm on the open sea or marching through a beautiful old growth forest, putting up some environments on the screen has been really fun. If you've ever had a DM screen, you might find you get tired of the art that's on the front. It's fun to have art that directly pertains to the campaign you're playing, but you don't want to necessarily go out and buy a new DM screen for every new campaign. So even if you don't want to use the screen for anything else that I've gone over, you can find some cool art or a looping animation and leave that up with the option to change it whenever you feel like it. Now for the software to run it. OBS is a free and open source piece of software designed for streaming, but it's also perfect for running this DM screen. You can right click in your program window and select full screen projector and then select the DM screen display. OBS will output whatever's in your program monitor to your DM screen. You can add different sources, including web browsers, videos, slideshows, and other sources as well. You can position them and size them however you like and be able to control everything without having to lean over the top of your DM screen to see what you're doing. Overall, this project took me about 10 hours, so it's something you could do in a weekend. If you buy all the tools, it costs just under $250, but half of that is the monitor. I am by no means a wood person, and I made a ton of mistakes along the way, but I still ended up with something that I'm really happy with and really excited about, so you can absolutely do this too. If this project seems a little too involved, or if you already have a DM screen but you're looking for some other crafts, you can check out this video here for some really easy and cheap props that you can make to level up your D&D game. I appreciate you. You know you can get stuff like that on Etsy for super cheap, right?